Hey guys, it's JM. Uh, I got recently got asked in one of the AMAs that we did on what I use to monitor my plotting servers or if we're going to build some kind of dashboard for monitoring plotting. What I use is a combination of Node Exporter, Prometheus, and Grafana. Grafana is the dashboard that you can look and view all the graphs in. Prometheus is the database where all the data is stored. Uh, and Node Exporter is the service that basically scrapes or you know, looks at the metrics from your CPU and your disk and all the stuff on your system. So you need these three things. Uh, the install is actually really easy, but unfortunately there is a million different ways to install this. You can install it in Docker, um, you can set up the services, and, and a lot of people in Linux like to do it their own way. Uh, so I'm going to give you one method for doing this. There's a, a million different other methods. So I'm going to give you kind of the fastest method. Uh, and then I can do some more advanced stuff later on how you would you know, install this so that it would start every time after your reboot and all that kind of good stuff. But so the first thing we're going to need to do is install all three uh, and basically download all three Node Exporter, Grafana, and Prometheus. So Grafana, if you look here on the Grafana's website, it'll ask you for Debian. You can basically install the Enterprise or OSS and you're going to want the OSS. That's just the regular one without the Enterprise support. And you can do all this good stuff. Um, to basically add the packages and to apt so you can install with apt and if we do those It's going to say I already have them if you do now I can do a sudo apt install Grafana and it's going to be there uh, the other the other way you can do this is basically just download the uh, package here from Grafana Grafana 844 and you can just do a wget on the website uh, And this will download the package and now we can see here uh, we can install it, sudo dpkg install Grafana. And if we do a ps aux grep Grafana, you will see we have uh, Grafana started. We can, we can see it in HTOP as well. Oh, that's Docker. Keep going. There we go, Grafana, yay. Okay, so it started. Um, and now we're going to need Prometheus. And so if you go to Prometheus's website, prometheus.io slash download, and then you can you know, basically go to this website and you can download Prometheus and Node Exporter. So this is the website we're going to be using. So we're going to go download Linux. So we're just going to do the same thing, copy link, address, do a wget here, and it's going to download this package for Prometheus. We're going to do a tar-xbf uh, Prometheus. And it's going to unzip these to that folder. So now we can see here, this is the folder that it unzipped it to. And we're going to do the same for Node Exporter. So we're going to go down here to Node Exporter, Linux, uh, copy address, wget, and then tar xdf of Node Exporter. Okay, so now we have both a Node Exporter and a Prometheus folder. So I'm going to show you a quick method of just how to get these up running real fast to test, and then Later, we can go mess with it so they can restart on the services uh, when you reboot the system and all that stuff. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this to make that easier. But uh, for right now, we're going to go basically start a screen called Node. We're going to go into Node Exporter and then just run Node Exporter. Now Node Exporter is running. And now we need to go into uh, Prometheus. Whoops, CD back back, CD Prometheus folder. Uh, so the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to tell Prometheus.yaml that we're using um, Node Explorer. So what we do is go into the YAML, and we're going to add this scrape config, job name, nodes, data configs, target, localhost, port uh, 9100. So we're going to take this, basically copy it, and we're going to pop it in here uh, in the static configs. So remember, if you can't just copy this whole thing in there because you don't, can't have two global sections, global for everything and the scrape the scrape default is 15 seconds if you're doing a test that's like much shorter like one to two minutes you'll probably want a scrape value that's uh you know a little bit less than 15 seconds so if you know if you wanted to you could come in here and basically turn this to five seconds or whatever okay so remember uh yaml is unforgiving you need to have these uh, indentations exactly in the right spot so um you know i i, I had to stare at my screen here a sec to make sure these are these are right it looks right now, if you basically, it tells you to run Prometheus with that config.yaml. Now, again, if you do it with this method, it's going to just be in this folder. The Prometheus.yaml is going to be in that folder. If you install Prometheus through Snap or some other tool, it's going to be in another folder. And so that is the confusion that is so much is caused by 
uh, Prometheus, Node Exporter, and Grafana is if you install different versions of them, especially if you're on a different distro, it's going to put them in different places. So this is just a stupidly easy way to do it. The Prometheus.yaml is going to be right in this folder. We run it and it's going to be here. Uh, okay, oops, but we wanted to run this in a screen. So we're going to say screen s Prometheus. And now we're going to run that same command. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is if we do a screen dash R. You'll see we have the Prometheus and node exporter running. You know, if we go to H top uh, as well, we should be able to see all three services. We're going to be able to see Grafana here, node exporter, and Prometheus. So we're going to see all three services here in HTOP. That means they're all running. Eventually, you don't have to run them in screens. You can set them up as services so they run. Uh, we're going to look at that later. This video is just the quick and easy, uh, you know, get started <laughs> for your first first time on Prometheus and Node Exporter. There's all kinds of interesting ways you can use these uh, additionally. So the first thing we're going to do is find the IP address of the server. It is minus uh, 192.168.0.74. We're going to pipe that into our browser with a 3000 at the end. And it's going to ask us for a name and password. It's just admin. Admin is the default. And so it's going to ask you if you want a new password. That's fine. You can set up your first um, your first data source. Um, I'm going to go in here. I, I think I actually had a dashboard from before. So I'm going to go and make sure that's deleted so we can have a nice fresh uh, start. Oops. Dashboards, browse. Okay, so I'm going to basically take this away so we can... Start fresh so you guys know what it looks like from a from a brand new install. Okay, so we're going to add data source and we're going to go to Prometheus. Remember, that's what we installed and we're going to go to HTTP. Just put what it, what it had in here and you can remember this is super flexible. You can monitor other servers with Prometheus so you can have other servers, you know, basically as a you can have a dashboard somewhere with Grafana and a server somewhere else. Uh, but for now, we're running them all on the same machine just for like ease of like we're monitoring this machine. This is just the easiest way to do it. So we're going to do localhost um, dash 9090 and that was the, the default. And if we just save and test, it's going to say data source updated. This is just the default, no name, password, credentials or anything. This is super easy. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we need a dashboard. So we're going to go to, if you go to grafana.com slash dashboards and search in node exporter, you'll see this one that is um, the one that's, I think that we've actually updated by the team. Um, and you'll see a Super ton of downloads and reviews. This is the one you want. So just copy this 1860 copy ID to dashboard. We're going to go back to Prometheus and we're going to go into dashboards, browse, we're going to import and we're going to just import that number, hit load. And it's going to say select the data source. We're going to select Prometheus. Yay. Uh, and voila. So that's it. We have a Grafana dashboard now. And by default, it, it shares, uh, by, by default, it stores, um, I believe uh, 15 days of time. So one of the, what we'll do is actually kick off a little test. Um, I think I have some SSDs mounted from when we were doing this other uh, test. I'm going to start another screen called uh, Mad Max. And I'm gonna run this Mad Max command. And so we can basically start, oops, something. Oh, I know what we did sudo ch mod 776 let's mount ssd1 oops two sudo i just formatted these so i forgot to do this okay screen r uh what do we call it mad max okay so now if we run this and we see we go to h top you can see we have CPU is running, Chia plot is running, so Mad Max is starting. Now we're going to be able to see this here in Grafana really easily. We can watch as the uh, CPU ramps up. And I'll show you kind of what I use as the dashboard. Um, I'll walk you through kind of what I what I use to uh, monitor plotting. Um, the CPU ones are really nice. Obviously, the one that they give you in, in, the, in the top is really important because you can see your red, which is I await, your busy of system, busy user, or your your, the uh, processes are doing stuff. You can see the memory used. Uh, we're going to be able to see the uh, CPU cycles down here, disk space used. So these are all kind of nice ones that they give you. If you go into, um, oops. so these are the basic ones um, for CPU and uh, storage disk. 
you can see now here the read write data we can go find our drive um, I actually am using I was doing a little test we're going to use uh, one of the an Optane 118 gigabyte as our attempt to to see if that actually is kind of interesting um, so we're going to find out here uh, what's what's happening on these drives here uh, wait time is your latency Q depth uh, Q size is your Q depth um, time spent doing AOs, uh, you know, this is just your percent busy time. How many, how much percent time is the drive doing IO? Uh, and so, yeah, a discard IOPS is trim. So that's all kinds of cool stuff here in the storage disk section, uh, the storage file system section, you can see, uh, file space available, um, for all the mounts. You can say mount as SSD, it'll tell us how much is free. Um, so that's nice. And. So if you want to create a new dashboard, so the one I really like to do also is when I do a new panel, you can create new stuff. Um, now you can play around with anything. You can do all kinds of different cool code stuff in here. Um, you know, I'm not a software developer, so I kind of clunk around here. But if you go to the metrics browser, you can see all these different things you can basically monitor. So one of the things that we're going to, I, I like to monitor is CPU core frequency. So you go to uh, node CPU scaling frequency Hertz, I believe is the, the current frequency, you know, not max min or uh, scaling min. So you're going to go to node CPU scaling frequency Hertz and CPU 16. We're going to use that query. And what we're going to do is title this CPU frequency. Um, we like time series. You can, you can do all kinds of any other, other, oops, let me, uh, scoot this over here. You can do all kinds of other cool, uh, cool things here, but we're going to do time series for this one. Uh, and let's see, label with unit. You can do Hertz, um, rotational speed. Okay. So that's, we just made like a really easy dashboard for CPU frequency. You can see here 4.6 gigahertz is what the CPU is clocked at. So that's nice. Um, and if you want to save the dashboard, you can save, um, you know, anything you want in the dashboard. The other thing that's really useful is hardware miscellaneous. Um, you can go here, see the temperature. Now we can see the, um, you know, CPU is now ramping up to about whatever it looks like 60 degrees. Um, you can see the NVMe drives here, um, 50 degrees, um, for NVMe zero one. Uh, that looks right. If we go into pseudo NVMe smart log slash dev slash NVMe zero namespace one. Yeah, 51C. Wow, that's kind of funny that they're exactly the same temperature, which is weird because they're in different spots. Uh, one of them is an M.2 and one of them is a U.2. So I'm actually kind of surprised they're the same temperature. Uh, but it does look like that node exporter is you know, correctly reading the uh, NVMe drive temperature. So uh, that's it. So yeah, when you're plotting, you know, CPU frequency, you can see here, this little red, that's the IO weight. Um, the, you know, the less IO weight you have, you know, the less IO bottleneck you are, you know, the faster plot times you're gonna have. So um, you, you can use this dashboard now to kind of look at your plotting and you know, do some additional debug on it. You know, especially when you're running multiple instances of Mad Max and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, you're gonna wanna basically max out CPU utilization with lowest IO weight possible. And you're gonna wanna basically use Grafana and Node Exporter to do that, so. Okay, this was hopefully this was helpful. Um, I can do a follow up where we go into maybe a little bit deeper dive on some of the other methods of how to install this, you know, and how to make it a service and do all that stuff. Because that's what I usually do when I set this up. But uh, if you're just doing a quick test, um, on a quick benchmark or something, and you wanted a dashboard to basically visualize your results, and you know, like like I do sometimes to when I'm writing a blog post or something, uh, this is a nice easy way to do it. So, all right, thanks guys.